the Joe Rogan experience. Just all those stories that like, it's just amazing to me that the public kind of thinks that there's no gap of time that they didn't see that could possibly be what led to this. Like it's not one day you were happy on the carpet and the next day you were making out with your friend in Italy. What the fuck? Well, there was a lot of time in between that that you didn't see. It didn't go. Yeah. I didn't like I didn't, you know. Yeah, but you can't rely on someone else's narrative, right? No, like, especially someone who doesn't know you. You really shouldn't even read what but, people write. about. Well, what's you. crazy is my dad again. You know, my dad's been a real figure in my life and um. My dad, when he got his Grammy nomination, he wore a, he went to the Grammys in a John 316 shirt and he, mm. he didn't get the Grammy. And the next day, the New York Post, someone put, even God can't save Billy Ray Cyrus in his <laughs> career. And he was sitting next to Johnny Cash. They were going to something. I have a Johnny Cash tattoo that was handwritten uh, to my dad from around that time. And he, he said, what the hell? Just like you say to me right now, you're my Johnny Cash. You know, he said, what the hell are you doing reading that? Yeah. And my dad said, I just never really picked up, picked up the paper again. But again, my dad didn't buy that paper. It was just kind of in your face. He should have thought that was funny. He he does now. Now he just says, well, whatever will get Johnny Cash to come and sit next to me and talk to me. Now he, <laughs> now he loves it. Um, and it's been really good to have him go before me. You know, it's, it's kind of that buddy system. I think it'd be really scary if I wouldn't have been able to see that. But to your right. point of... I don't click on this shit. You know, it, it comes into my life by if Other I walk people, by a magazine right. stand, which I like to walk yeah. on the street and it says like Miley's on drugs and pregnant. And then I think one of those things are true, but not the <laughs> other. Fuck you for lying about me. Yeah, but that's all they have. I mean, what when someone's in the public eye and someone's as prominent as you are, you become a, a way for them to access money. Right. That's all you are. Clickbait yeah. advertisement. And That's I it. totally get it. It's that unprogramming of also, I think what's interesting sitting here with you is that all of this is kind of new. Um, I mean, even just like the idea of podcasts, what I used to do when it was like promo time for a record. Okay, so I'm 12 years old and I'm printing physical copies of my album. So I have to write my fucking music, you know, six Months before you actually, so I just did Dolly's new album for Christmas, and I had to record a Christmas song in July. It was the weirdest thing I've ever done in my life. But when you make physical copies, that's what you do. And you're telling a story from always being behind, especially when it comes to the media. So now what I love about this, what I love doing, you know, a show like yours is like, we talk about it right now. And people hear it right now, so you're getting the real information. Mm -hmm. You're not getting information from, all right, I, you know, I shot a magazine cover. I did an interview. I was la la in love with my boyfriend. I mean, that literally happened when I did Vanity Fair. I flew there like a week after I got married. By the time the damn thing was on the stands, I was divorced. It was old news. <laughs> it was like, come on, you know. So you're really not able to tell your story in real time, and that's what I love about the new way that music is happening and streaming. And I love the idea that like I threw up that um, uh, flaming lips. Record I did on SoundCloud and it was like you know no one had to buy it or right. I sound 105 but it's very exciting because I really hated always being behind myself and I think that's what now I can use my art as my kind of I guess the way that I can talk to the the press isn't what bothers me it's kind of the public you know mm -hmm. and, and I and I got in this habit where when people would meet me I guess I didn't get in a habit it just became a thing that happened constantly was I'd meet someone and they go man, you're not as crazy as I thought you'd be. And I'm like, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I don't know what you thought I'd be doing right now. If you thought I'd be in like, you know, space buns dropping acid or something. But people say that to me all the time, that I'm not as crazy as they thought I would be. And that's just a weird thing to say to someone. Yeah, but the public image, like what they sold of you, you know, here you are, Hannah Montana, and then all of a sudden you're this very sexual singer, and you're doing all this crazy stuff, and you're on television shaking your ass, and everybody's seeing that, and they're like, oh, Miley Cyrus is out of control now, she's what? Yeah. So then that becomes the narrative, it's right? It's funny when people make the narrative when you become in control that now you're out of it. Yeah. That was always really interesting Well, for it's me. also youth, right? Like, like think about the marriage thing, right? You, take, mm -hmm. you say, Vanity Fair, they write the article, you're deeply in love. By the time it comes out, you're already divorced. Right. That's so Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, to them, that's like, oh, we've seen this fucking story before. Yeah. We know where this is going. Also, you're a child star. Yeah. Oh, shit, we've seen this story before. And so you get 
stuck in that narrative too, right? Because Absolutely. they want you to fall down the exact same path. They don't want you to it's reinvent a familiar yourself. Path. Yes. yes. Well, then, then they'll familiar spell story. it out for you. This yeah. is what she's doing. Now she's I'm, on drugs and she's pregnant. I've had to. Con- I've had to. Now I don't read those types of things, but I've had to unlearn that they're not true. Because sometimes mm. I write things. I write things down. When I want something to get put into my head, even if I'm going to have a hard conversation with somebody, usually I kind of write a little mini script for myself. So I kind of know where I I don't like going into something with no direction. Where do I want this to go? What are my goals? What do I want? That's what any of your athletes would do. It's like I, I know that I have that as an artist. I want to have a long career. I have to do the things to be able to have that um, longevity. And so I would write down you know, kind of a kind of an idea of where I'd want conversations to go, even with the people in my life and what do I want out of them. And I had to stop going, hey, just because they wrote that down, it's true. Because something about writing it down gives a lot of power. Mm. I don't like to write down things that I don't mean. That's why I don't write songs that I hate because once you write it down, they are like alive. So you know? what you're saying is that like reading things that other people wrote about you made you think that those things were real. So yeah. it, it fucked with your own personal narrative. Yes. Like Sometimes I'd be trying to prove something that I didn't need to prove. Mm-hmm. Like all of a sudden I'd be trying to prove that I'm not crazy when I knew I wasn't crazy. Right. Um, and yeah, I just think also, I mean, when we're talking about realistic children's books i think the stigma that kind of uh surrounds you know youth growing up rebelling and then craziness and then what's the line between that and and mental illness and you know i do have some kind of genetic family history of alcohol i mean that totally gets erased when you're a celebrity it's like hollywood did this to you it's like no dude my great grandma was an alcoholic you know my granddad was an alcoholic my grandma's an alcoholic um you know so i i obviously had it wasn't hollywood you know, mm-hmm. it's genetic. I, I, I understand myself from a human. There's nothing about me that thinks I am superhuman, and I think that, I think I would, I would take that as something that, that makes me unique because I don't think that I'm really. I know that there's something special about me in my life, but I don't feel that on this level of of being a human that I'm different. And so I know what it takes to keep this motor going and 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 I also know when to take time. Well off. all those things you said are perfect. As long as you have doubt, as long as you want to do better, as long as you're recognizing who you are is not exactly who you want to be. Yeah. You want to be better, you want to figure it all out, you want to work it all through. And you have this weird guilt from growing up in this weird it's way. It's bad. It has to be. Yeah. You're a fucking superstar when you're a little kid. The guilt's crazy. There's no way around it. And if you hang out with normal people, they're going to stick that in your face. And a, lot, soon, a lot of people hold my guilt. Of they course. They know it's a weakness, so they use it with me a lot. you got to find people that don't do that. Yeah. That's, that's why my, my crew is pretty small. Beautiful. Well, yeah. they're all nice people. They are. And they've all been my in my life for over 10 years. And that is possible. People ask people that are famous, like, is it possible that you could find people that d- don't get weird around you? Yeah, you could find them, but they have to be strong strong people exactly you have to have people that have their own personal sovereignty exactly. They're people that can hold their own space they don't need you they just love you yeah and oh, that man. is possible man you know i had someone that that tried to tried to hurt me and say that i mean i i really have had i've 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 had really amazing people in my life but i've had people that have tried to hurt me too i even brought my little scarf just in case i got emotional because i really might I had someone recently try to tell me that everyone in my life is afraid of me. And that, like, that really makes me upset just because... Well, I bet a lot of people in your life are afraid of you. I think everyone in my life that I have in my close inner circle really loves me. And so to say that everyone in my life acts out of fear of me, my mom... I'm almost fucking 30. She will whip my ass. If, like, my mom will actually hit me. But I like, don't mean it in a bad way. No. I don't mean that they're afraid of you, like, like afraid you're going to do something terrible and they're afraid around you. I mean, you're a powerful thing. You're, you mean, this? there's no getting away from who you are. You got to kind of accept that you're Miley Cyrus. That, yeah, that You're I'm a very on. strange thing. There's, a, there's on. one Miley Cyrus on, in the universe that we know of. It's you. And you're really fucking famous, and you're really young. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. There's no getting around that. Yeah. And the fact that you feel guilt about all this, and the fact you want things to be difficult, those are all the the best indicators that you're trying to do better. Yeah. Like you get it. Yes. You do get it, and you know that you have a hard road. And the people that don't think you have a hard road, they're out of their fucking mind. Like I didn't get famous until I was much later in life, I, and it was a slow drip it, into my 30s and into my 40s. That seems and healthier. It, took, it was way healthier. That seems healthy. But I also during the whole time did martial arts. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I was always humbled. I was always yeah. getting my ass kicked. Yeah. And I feel like those two things are the only things that saved me from my own brain. Yeah. Because you're you're like people are not designed to be famous. Yeah. That's why kings are all tyrants. Yeah. When you're the one person who gets to make all the calls, absolute power can it corrupts absolutely. It's a common expression, right? Yes. Absolutely. That happens with famous I'm people. I'm trying to have a good relationship with the power and feel feel a healthy dynamic. The way you're it. describing it is perfect. Like how many like. Look, the Ellen situation. I don't know Ellen. Yeah. She's probably a nice lady, but she's in control. <laughs> yeah. She's in control of all these people, and they're all scared of her. She's like, fuck you, where's my tea? Right. You know, that that kind of shit, that's not a good place for a person to be, yeah. to, to have that See, much control over really, that many really people. See, that's I'm really, really proud of myself that I don't live in that world. And I think I could probably also mark that up to animals and how much I love them. And I think I'm that's sure. what led to my veganism for a time right. was like the fact that tonight I have to put powder on my dog's ass. <laughs> that makes what me happy. What does the powder do? I don't don't get with the power apparently well, I think it kind of just hopefully conceals in some way how disgusting it's <laughs> very very out there and in your face and I think it's more of like a, a concealer mm. um, but I'm really happy that Kate Moss Hey guys, I gotta say, Kate Moss makes me put baby powder on her ass. Just use that as the teaser. Uh, <laughs> one time, Kate Moss made me put baby powder on her ass. It's called Monkey Butt. So I um that that makes me happy. And like my one of my dogs, he's obsessed with drinking out of the pool, and so he like throws oh, up all the God. time, and it's disgusting. Yeah. And it honestly always makes me happy. And the one thing that I like about my dogs is that they don't know who I am. Right. I mean, they know that they got a good living situation. They're probably like, I wonder what she does for a living, but because <laughs> their life is pretty good, and they get to go to other places also um but yeah my dogs don't know who i am so they i like that and the cats you. scratch yeah. the shit out of me all the time and the pigs are horrible they bite my ankles i love it about them episodes of the joe rogan experience are now free on spotify that's right they're free from september 1st to december 1st they're going to be available everywhere but after december 1st they will only be available on spotify but they will be free that includes the video the video will also be there it'll also be free that's all we're asking. Just go download Spotify. Much love. Bye-bye. Mm.